I get exactly the same butterflies every single time I come here, whether it's an evening game, pre-season, friendly, today. It's just something, even driving up here, when I see the stands and you know, if I drive past, it just gives me that butterfly feeling in my stomach. And this is um, my late uncle, Andrew Cooper, who was the, the one of the biggest Exeter City fans going. Um, he was a proper lower league stato. He was interested in the Premier League, well, first division back then. Um, he was the one who brought me up here when I was seven, um, right up to his death uh, in 2009. So he just passed it on to me, basically, and he's the one responsible for the uh, doom and gloom and the, and the glory days in the past. My dad wasn't really into football like that. So he was, my uncle was the one who brought me up here. He was like my big brother I never had, basically. And he was the one who kept saying to me, don't listen to all the other boys, you've got to support your local team. Excellent. And it obviously um, worked. We've also got a programme there as well. Yeah, this is a programme from my first ever game that he took me to in 1983 against Brentford. Unfortunately, we lost 7-1, <laughs> but it didn't put me off, no. thankfully. And the, I looked online just to double check, and the first ever goal scorer was Chris Kamara, wow. who obviously is a famous guy now on, uh, on Soccer Saturday. So, um, yeah, just looking at the names on the back, it's quite famous names. But obviously it didn't put me off because I, I was addicted after that. So. What can you remember from that day when you first kind of stepped out and looked at the ground? Um, I think it was more of the smells, the smells of hot dogs, pasties. Um, it was in the cow shed uh, towards the big bank end. That's where we always stood on the same barrier. Um, yeah, just the sound and just, I think the, how green the grass was. I was only seven at the time, so it was, you know, it was my first real football game, so. My favourite was probably Scott Hiley from the Championship. Obviously, a right back, used to run up and down the wing. My dad got quite friendly with Scott Hiley, playing golf alongside him, so I had a bit of a soft spot for him there. Um, always like Ryan Harley. Um, different, all different players, really. I, I, I'm one of those who I just support whatever teams on the pitch. I don't have you know, heroes as such or enemies. I do, if I wear a red and white shirt, they get my full support. I've got every single home program from 1976 is when I was born, and I'm missing about three or four. So I'm just searching on eBay at the moment, trying to find the odd one or two. Um, it's something I've kept up. I religiously buy a program. I can't relax until I've got a program. I'm on every home game. I've got a lot of away games as well, and like, you know, uh, Wembley visits, playoffs and stuff like that as well, so. Favorite match I've seen at the park? Um, I would say it was probably, in recent memories, it would be the, the Huddersfield game. We had to win to stay up. Um, I think it's just the, the tension, the unexpectedness of the, the late go from Harley, and just the, the sheer, I think it was relief and just excitement around the ground of just of staying in League One. Best go, I would say, would be Martin Phillips against Fulham. Well, you know, it must be early 90s, I would say. Fulham were one of the top teams. I think it might have been the old third division. And he just, cut, he just ran from the halfway line and pinged it in the top corner right in front of the big bank. Martin Phillips was the same age group as me, so I always played against him. I was a full back and he was a winger, so I sort of like grew up playing against him. So I always had, when he signed for Exeter City, then obviously I had a bit of a soft spot for him. So, Best away trip was Lincoln away when we won the league in 1990. I was only 13 at the time. It was my second away game ever, but I do remember, uh, I think we won 5-1. I do remember getting sunburnt on the back of my neck because it was so hot that day, obviously being the last game of the season. And one of the goal scorers, Ben Rowe, I now actually work with him as a postman. So I do ask him about that goal quite a lot and he's, go away Darren, you know, he talks about it all the time. So, Well, I was a ball boy, a ball boy in the championship season. Um, it was from Colin Wheatcroft. I think he used to be the groundsman here back in the day. It was something to do with Beacon Knights, which was the youth team I used to play for. And uh, we just got chosen for that particular season. I was 13 years old. Um, never lost a game in any competition, which is my claim to fame. Um, I used to do the away end go because no one else wanted to go down by the away supporters. That was quite lively. Um, and also, we got brought into the dressing room after the last game of the season. And Terry Cooper gave, us a big, uh, gave a big speech to all the ball boys, thanking us for our hard work over the season. And all the players gave us a round of applause and we got a programme sort of And I was actually on the pitch when Sean Taylor lifted the trophy because the ball boys did a guard of honour. That's something that I've never, obviously, being a massive Exeter City fan was magical to me. It was, I think it was the late 80s, I'm going back again, showing my age. We were playing at home to Grimsby, and we were losing 1-0 with three minutes left, and City scored two late goals to win 2-1. And the goalkeeper that day for Grimsby was a guy called Nigel Batch. Now, he's a bit of a legend, I think, in Grimsby, he played a lot of games for them. It was either the same season or the following season, we were at home to Darlington, we were losing 1-0, and my uncle said to me, you realise you can go today, don't you, for Darlington? It was Nigel Batch. And we scored two goals in the last three minutes again to win 2-1. So from that day onwards, me and my uncle, whenever City needed a late goal for an equaliser or a winner, we always said, 
come on Nigel Butch. <laughs> and I still do it to this day. I've done it last season a few times when we need to go. So if you ever hear anyone on the big bank shout, Nigel Batch, it's me. And I've actually got a photo of him on my fridge because <laughs> it reminds me of my uncle like in the old, in the, in the old days. So that Excellent. is like, yeah. I think the best thing is the, the family aspect of it. My two sons now come. My oldest one's a season ticket on the big bank. So the, the tradition is being passed down. Um, it's just the welcome in nature, there's never no trouble, everyone, see it's a big, massive great family, it's people you know, the different sounds, different voices that people shout from the big bank, you just think, oh yeah, I recognise that voice, and they're, and they're still coming, and it's just, just a great day out. Yeah, I'm fairly confident actually, I think we can build on um, what we did last year, um, I've got total faith in Matt Taylor, I think he did very well considering he came in late last year, um, his signings that he did make, I think we're all pretty much spot on, so hopefully that works again, and onwards and upwards, and hopefully, automatic promotion because I can't handle the stress of the playoffs again. <laughs>